everybody. Good afternoon. Um, I come from a local engineering company called Hope Technique. So the big idea they asked was basically robotics of the future. Let's just cut down to the chase. If we were asked this question and we said that InnoFest in 10 years' time, what will we expect that whole area to look like? I think that is the question I'm hoping to bluff you with an answer for. Um, what do we do as a company? I'm going to sell you what we do. We do a lot of weird, fun stuff. Um, that's an altitude kind of a... I'm getting the wrong slide, so... Um, that's a kind of an altitude chart of what we do. We do everything from red rhino fire trucks to electric car charging stations to automatic guided vehicles to things that go to lower space. So we kind of do it A to Z, mechanical electrical software. But the reason why I'm telling you this is fundamentally just to share with you that we kind of are in this kind of robotic space and real high-tech point of view. So now comes the very painful question, what's next? First and foremost, let us not forget that there is a very big definition that we need to be clear of. One is called automation and the other one is called robotics. The world we see is very heavily in, in automation. Defined very simply, you do the same job in the same environment repeatedly. That is automation. Robotics is different. Robotics by its true nature is it can do a task in a different environment on its own. There is basically freedom. So that's the paradigm shift that we need to concern ourselves with. Do you like this autonomous car? Does it look cool? For the guys um, who, who have never seen a Hummer, which is very popular in the US, it's a military big vehicle. It's a really big vehicle. And that's an autonomous car. You guys believe me? No, you don't. You say that, no, 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 that's an autonomous vehicle, right? What's the point? On the left side, that was Carnegie Mellon's um, CMU's um, autonomous vehicle, and the year was 2004. The challenge was to drive that vehicle across a desert, autonomously, a desert. There's nothing much to hit. I always believe that if you just open the door, tight the steering wheel straight, and put a brake there, and it'll go, it should get to the other side. In 2004, nobody succeeded in doing that. The one on the right is obviously Google's car, and in Singapore, you're racing A-Star having autonomous vehicles developed in Singapore and driving. What is the point? The point is fear. That is 2004. This is 2015. Have you ever seen in the history of man technology moving at this pace that in 11 years, look at it carefully, you see that? It's Boeing Phantom Works. Phantom Works is a think tank for Boeing, and that's what they do in 2004. What's next? Now, this is the part that I like to scare people. You're starting to see these things on YouTube and Facebook and stuff like that, and they look really, really cute. These cute little robots that are skinnier than me, um, walking in funny ways, um, and they fall down and we laugh at them. So this is um, the Grand Robotics Challenge done by DARPA. Fortunately, if you want to know the results that came out last year, is that none of the robots succeeded. But we have to be worried. The first challenge of this thing by DARPA, which is the, the military R&D sign in the US, is fundamentally, and this gets fun, um, it goes into a golf buggy by itself, it jumps in a golf buggy, and it drives the golf buggy autonomously, gets out, climbs up the stairs, opens the door, um, takes up a tool from the floor, drills a hole in the wall, gets through that hole, um, and it listens for a gas leak, an air leak kind of sound, and then it finds it automatically, it finds a screwdriver from the floor, it opens the cover, it takes out the cover, and it replaces the leaking valve autonomously. That was the mission by DAPA. Fortunately, we are all alive still. Um, terminators are not happening. Um, none of the robots succeeded. But don't forget the last slide. The previous slide was in 2004. We asked a car to drive across the desert, and no one succeeded, and now we know where we are. We love this Go game, right? Huh? Everyone's been talking about it. Now, if you start to make, take this ability of artificial intelligence and mix it into the hardware, what you're going to see is something phenomenally um, frightening. I give you a fine example. A definition of AI, true AI, is you give the ro uh, a computer system the game Tetris, and you give it two buttons, and, it tell, and you tell it, make the score as high as you can. You can press button A or button B. Let it run a good AI engine will be able to run the game Tetris. And from what I heard from some of the think tanks, in four days, it beat the game Tetris at level 999. 
you never told it what is a horizontal um, um, four bar thing or, or a square per se or an L and what does it do. It learns by itself. If you mix this kind of artificial intelligence together with robotics, we are basically bringing the fangs to daily life. This is my life. Uh, I wake up sometimes. Uh, breakfast, go to work, I shuffle papers, I go home. Um, I do watch Korean dramas because my wife likes to watch them, per se. Prediction number one, um, the sale of alarm clocks is going to die in the new robotics era. Alarm clocks. Why? Because wouldn't it be nice if the robot woke you up, cooked your breakfast, drove you to work in a normal car, not in an autonomous vehicle, picked you up when your work was done, go home, it cooks the dinner for you, and the robot is so sweet, it tucks you into bed. You think it won't happen. If you look at what the, what the militaries of the world are preparing and what the think tanks like Google are doing, it's not long, it's not far. What this will effect is basically the change of where the power is. But if you really want to ask a question a bit deeper and more painful than that is this part, shuffle papers. Why would we bother having a robot send me to work and cook me my breakfast and pick me up from work when it is so immensely capable and obviously much better than me? So this problem of where that red box of shuffling papers is, is something which is going to represent a new paradigm. If you think about it, whoever holds the key to build, to taking all this internet of things, all the latest software, artificial intelligence, and mixing it together with hardware, what you're going to get as an end result is you're going to get a robotic slave army. Yes, we like to call it in the office, I slave, okay? It is genuine, it is coming. Um, you talk about internet of things, you want to change your thermostat, wouldn't it be nice if the robot just did it for you and you didn't have to buy all those thermostats? But you flip it to the other side, in terms of the business and the paradigm, it will change. So we are all the tech people. We don't really care whether the robots take over the world. Just as we are going to get killed, we'll look at the robot and go, wow, it's such a cool robot. And then it'll promptly go and kill us. That's another story. What's the opportunity for all of us as techies? This is a very weird case where there are no more incumbents. We are not trying to build the next fighter jet. We are not trying to go to space. We are not even trying to do Hyperloop. We are going, there is this new economy and opportunity where you don't really have many big boys. You don't have any companies that have been running there for 30 to 40 years with 5 million square feet of, of factory space and all the patents and stuff. This is open. It's a new game. It's, it's exposed. Next, we don't actually need to build the entire robot. It is going to be the most complicated system of systems. The eye is one thing, the hand is one thing. Don't even look at a hand, look at a finger. Don't look at a finger, just look at the fingertip. That is an opportunity. In the end, it's the same way as our iPhones and our phones are like. It's a system of systems, but this is going to be many orders of magnitude larger. And the last one per se to end is, let's face reality, this is going to be the new economy. So there is an opportunity for all of us techies to understand that the robots of the future, the new era, is going to grow fangs. They are no longer going to reside in the computer. It's no longer going to be just internet of things. It's no longer going to be a software. It's no longer going to be an app. Personal prediction, in 10 years' time, the people who are doing and supporting this entire conference, per se, um, we, they will be charging their batteries in the evening, and we won't be paying them. So I really hope that we are the ones who own it. Thank you very much. Have a good day.